welcome to a brand new episode here on Sunnyside Up Farms. So what are we busy doing today? Well as you can see today we're in the big case and we are going to be doing some ploughing. Now I'm not too sure whether to plough it along there or along there. <laughs> You are you're getting the inner workings of James's brain. Fascinating place to be, honestly. Uh, or down here. Probably this side, I would say, is a favourite. So that's what we're going to do, I think. So uh, yeah, we're out, as I say, in the big David Brown today, or the case, but in the David Brown colours. Um, and uh, we are doing a spot of ploughing so uh, I have to admit I've been looking forward to doing this job uh, with this tractor let's just slow down the cruise control because when I lift up the plough that's going to uh, create a very uh, interesting situation and uh, we'll go in cab and then we'll be able to keep our bonnet lined up with the side there now I do know that with this tractor I should really have an offset plow but I can't find a Daswell six or seven for a offset plow so this unfortunately is the only way I can do it so <laughs> I've literally well I say I've literally put the thinnest tires on this tractor I could I haven't not quite because there are some really really thin uh, row crop tires but it looks ridiculous and you just wouldn't plow with it so these are the thinnest sort of normal tires I could get um, but as you can see it is one heck of a beast uh, in our uh, field hopefully I'm keeping straight mm, not bad but yes yeah, so I hope you are well <clears throat> and I hope you yesterday enjoyed the uh, the uh, farm manager series it's uh, we will uh, leave a headland here it's half tempting because of this is all grass not to but um, we will just because uh, it will help to uh, keep everything neat and tidy while the steering's a bit lively on this tractor all right as soon as you feel the tractor go down and drive Oh, is the tractor? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the, tra the tractor thought about it. Let's just make sure, yeah, we're in the furrow. We're doing good. So, uh, yeah, as I say, it's going to be a bit of a uh, ploughing video today, unfortunately. So it's kind of a case of do I do a chatty video or do I do a time lapse video? But all the time lapse is going to be is ploughing, unfortunately, because, uh, as I say, this is the job for today. Uh, the other two tractors, the other two David Browns, as you can see, they're out. Uh, they're delivering uh, canola to the train station, uh, ready to be sold with the oats. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what they're up to. Um, and uh, we'll see how much we get for them. Probably not much, but at the moment, any cash is uh, good cash. So we'll take it. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I am actually using the steering wheel today rather than the keyboard because the keyboard trying to sort of make slight adjustments to the steering is quite janky and you can't always sort of control how much of uh, steering adjustments that you make but with the um, steering wheel obviously I can sort of manipulate it to, to do what uh, I need it to do but um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a it's a delicate little job this one i want to try and do as best i can sort of try and when i'm <laughs> on farming sim plowing i try to uh, imagine that uh, you know i'm back at work and uh, being allowed to plow freehand uh, as i said before i i am um, on the first farm that i worked on uh, they had a six for a dad's well that they bought me an offset one uh, to go on the back of the um, to go on the back of the uh, uh, track marshal and uh, <clears throat> absolutely awesome 
uh, because I got to, as a little boy, I, I must have told you the story already, so I'm not, I'm not going to sort of, you know, go into great detail. But as a little boy, the farm that I ended up working on, all of their fields back onto my house uh, that I grew up in as a small child. And as I've said before, my uncles all worked on that farm. My nan and granddad worked on that farm. Uh, and my mum in the summer used to go and help out on the farm as well with tatey picking um, and strawberry picking and uh, um, pea harvest and stuff like that in terms of going and picking the pods and what have you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, as I say, a very small uh, family-run farm, but not by our family. It was run by another family, but... Uh, it you know just happened to be that it was all sort of my relatives that worked on the farm and my granddad uh, as i was growing up in the uh, sort of mid 80s onwards really cause early 80s i was born um so you know I, I you know wouldn't have been sort of uh, active then if you like uh, and to be fair the first sort of five six years of my life i was i lived in great Ormond street um while they tried to uh, you know repair my heart and and uh, you know get me to live some sort of life and uh, and so uh, as I say I just wasn't sort of kind of around but mid to late 80s by 80 sort of six seven uh, you know sort of what would I be as you know sort of um, six years old I don't know my maths is not very good as I've said before I suffer really badly with dyscalculus so unfortunately my maths are are not very good but you know sort of six seven eight somewhere around there um you know i've memories of my uncle dick driving the class dominator uh combine uh which is the same or very similar to the one that we've got now um and uh on the game i mean uh as i say the the, the equipment on here is sort of representative of what the farm had um, but uh, the farm didn't get this tractor until a few years later so I think it was sort of mid 90s when that, this tractor came onto the farm but uh, I tried to get a, a track marshal uh, in terms of mod and I couldn't get anything that was close to it um, so in the end I opted to go for this tractor because it was a tractor big enough to pull the six for a dad's well that they had but rather than it being an inline plough it was an offset plough uh, but then uh, and you know so basically what would happen is, is I would be indoors I'd be upstairs probably playing with my toys or whatever then the house would start violently shaking and you'd kind of sit there wonder for a second or two what's going on and then it would quickly dawn on me granddad's in the field with the crawler um, and so I'd go running down the stairs go into into mum 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 can i go out and look at granddad on the crawler and she'd be like yeah but don't you get in that field <laughs> and uh, and of course i'd run out there go to the gap uh, in the hedge because the the entrance to their field was right next to my lawn um so i would then run to the the, the end of the hedge and sort of uh, the uh, entrance to their field and um and sure enough, Grandad would be trundling along, and I'd run, I'd run round the other side of the hedge, run along the hedge, and then so it was a bit of an L shape um, because the field ran round the grounds of the house, and uh, that sounded very grand. Trust me, it wasn't. Um, and uh, and then I'd, you know, Grandad would be the other side ploughing the short bit first, and uh, and of course I'd be sort of stood there and out of the way, you know, I knew not to get in the way, uh, you know, farm safety. Uh, for me was sort of drummed into me fairly early on I'm not getting that very straight this time look. Um, fairly early on and, um, and and I've even missed a bit there look. Shh, don't tell no one on YouTube they'll never know um, and um, <clears throat> I will go back and get that bit just because uh, it will uh, it will bug the hell out of me <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'd go and watch him, and of course the first thing my granddad would do is when he got to the the end of the conifers, you know, the 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 house end as we used to say, he'd stop. Do you want to ride then? <laughs> I'd get on the crawler and like literally for I don't know two, three, four hours, whatever. Like I'd just be riding up and down on the toolbox of this track marshal, the toolbox, 
it was like a box inside the cab uh, next to the driver's seat it had a lid on it and in there was you know what granddad sort of put you know his dinner bag in there and and everything else but um yeah so i used to sit on top of that lent up against the back post of the cab and literally just ride in that uh oh wow some of the imagery going through my head right now is uh is incredible and um uh, as i remember and re- you know sort of recall it and just sit for hours and hours and hours having my little gut shaken up and down you know on this track marshal you know steel tracks no rubber tracks in those days you know uh, the uh, David Brown tractor with the low loader and the diesel tank on the end of the field and uh, what have you and uh, I realise this is not too professional but uh, like I say as long as you don't tell no one watching on YouTube then we'll be fine uh, so just keep it between uh, me and you <clears throat> I need to play out this thing because it will bug the hell out of me um, so yeah uh, you know happy days you know those, those that was when life didn't get no better you know when life couldn't get no better and you know yeah don't get me wrong you know some pretty cool things as an adult has happened but all those years later i then went and worked on the farm on the same farm as my granddad and all my uncles and that it's the first farm that i worked on and uh i think i must have said it in the last episode or the first episode or whatever so like i say i'm not going to go into you know a great deal of uh, detail or anything like that but um, being uh, at the farm the first summer, I was in the workshop at Farm 2, as they called it, and the track marshal was sat right at the back in the dark, all covered up, you know, tarpaulin sheets all over it and what have you. And it really did look a sorry sight, and I sort of thought, you know, you know poor old granddad, you know, he must be... Because he, he absolutely adored that tractor. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was mid pristine it still is to this day um it's still in near mint condition um and i've tried several times to buy it off the uh, farm that i worked on but they won't let me have it um but i have tried and i'll keep trying every now and again when i bump into him either in the village or you know out and about say now about that track marshal and he goes yeah not for sale (laughs) um but uh yeah, as I say, it's uh, it's uh, still holds a very fond place in. Oh, I still missed it. Look, oh dear me, James. Um, yeah, still holds a very fond place in my heart. And uh, as I say, it uh, will always be some of my best and happiest childhood memories. But as I say, that first summer working on the farm uh, myself and. Uh, seeing the uh, track marshal at the back of the shed thinking dear oh dear oh dear granddad wouldn't like that and i happened to just sort of kind of pass the comment of course it's a pity i can't do my plowing on that um and then i was basically told a few weeks later you get it going and you can we'll buy you a plow for it um and so i did i got it going again uh, well i say i got it i helped to get it going again because uh I'm no mechanic, <laughs> uh, but I did a lot of fetching and carrying <laughs> and driving all over the country to fetch parts and stuff like that. But uh, when I say all over the country, I didn't have to go that far. But um, yeah, uh, as I say, it uh, it, it was a um, a real pleasure and privilege that on my second year in the summer in August. Uh, I got given the choice. Did I want to go on the combining? Uh, did I want to go combining in terms of driving the tractors and trailers, or did I want to plow on the track marshal? Uh, it was only one winner for me. I was like, you don't even have to ask. I'm on the track marshal, uh, and I spent the whole summer plowing with the track marshal and a six for offset reversible Dowswell plow, and. It was the business. I absolutely loved every single second of it. Uh, and it was incredible. Uh, don't get me wrong, you know, the plan wasn't that great. I wasn't that good at driving the track marshal, nowhere near as good as my granddad, but that was the only summer that I did with it. Uh, thereafter, we, you know, thereafter I had to do it with my wheel tractor. Um, and then a couple of three years, I, I don't know, 
two to four years later, somewhere around there, I, I left the farm and uh, went off and worked on the on the, the big farm that I went and worked on. And um, you know, sort of, I don't regret it, but you know, I, I, I sort of did kind of feel like I'd sort of broken tradition, but. Uh, as I've said before, you know, one or two things happened on that farm, you know, getting me to dig the concrete and that with the pickaxe and the and the um, shovel, um, you know, and one or two other little things as well happened. Um, uh, and, and I just felt it was time to move on. Uh, you know, it, it was time to, to, to say goodbye. And I say, although I felt like I was breaking tradition and, and going against, you know, what, what uh, you know we as a family did on that farm I still feel it was the right thing for me to do um, because the second farm that I went to never once asked me to do anything that I wasn't capable of doing and if it did ask me to do something and it turned out I wasn't capable of doing I was told under no uncertain terms you tell us and we'll give you something else to do and one of the other lads can do it um, and uh, you know, but to be fair to them, they had a fair, you know, a, a rough idea as the years passed what I could and couldn't do. And, and they only really ever gave me jobs that I could do. And because I was the main plowman on the farm, um, you know, I didn't spend a great deal of time away from tractors. Um, you know, I was either on my Challenger plowing or on my John Deere plowing. Um, because when it obviously got too wet in the uh, winter, uh, you know, and, and we were still able to plough. I'd be using the John Deere wheel tractor, the 8R series, and um, you know that that that's that's what I'd be doing. But yeah, so yeah, good times and good memories. I never got to drive this tractor though. Um, I did get a ride on it, but I didn't get to drive it, uh, which was unfortunate. Uh, by the time I joined the farm, this tractor had gone. But when I was a kid, uh, John, who I ended up working with. Uh, he worked on the farm with my da with my granddad and everyone as well. But he was like the young lad of the farm, uh, and by the time I got there, he was like the old man of the farm. So, <laughs> you know <laughs> how <laughs> how the tide had turned. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he was he was um, harrowing or cultivating in the field one uh, one school holiday. And again, I was looking through the hedge at him, and he stopped and said, "Would you like a, a ride?" And uh, and I said, "Yeah," because like Mum and everyone knew him, so they didn't mind me going off with the tractor drivers on the farm on that field. As long as it was on uh, that field, um, then you know Mum didn't mind me just sort of going off and and having rides on the on the machinery. Uh, she took exception a few times when I walked quite along. <laughs> I was only a small. I was probably about sort of again six seven maybe eight old, at the oldest and i used to <laughs> so where we lived we lived on a crossroads uh so we lived we lived as i say on a crossroads and and the junction we had to walk over the junction to get to the lane and it, once you got and the rain the lane ran parallel parallel to uh, the road that led down to the farm and my nans and my granddads and my aunts and my uncles and everything like that um and so I, as a, I, I wasn't very old. Cause boy, did I get in trouble for it. Granddad was ploughing right down. I could see him. Uh, we had a, a not really old coal bunker, and I climbed up onto the coal bunker. Well, of course, that allowed me to see over the conifers, and uh, I could see my granddad was right, you know, about half a mile away ploughing. And I thought I could walk down there. Mum doesn't mind me riding with Granddad, and of course, I never, you know, I never went in to sort of say to mum or oh, I'm walking off down the road to you know to 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 watch granddad or whatever and uh, <laughs> I uh, I walked off down the road and uh, and uh, went and uh, uh, say crossed the big main road crossed over the uh, the um, the crossroads and the junctions onto the lane walked all the way down the lane so it's a good half a mile quarter to half a mile away and uh, got to my granddad and my granddad was like what are you doing down here on your own so i, I said uh, oh no it's okay mum let me and he's kind of looking at me going are you sure yeah yeah granddad yeah mum let me yeah, it's fine she said i could come down and have a ride oh well come on then and i'd uh, get on the tractor and on the track marsh and i'd be riding up and down well <laughs> 
about sort of I don't know 45 minutes an hour later mum's on a what I, what I now refer to as her Mary Poppins bike <laughs> it's green it was and they're like a kind of really sort of you know she used to sit like bolt up right look like Mary Poppins and on the front of the bike was um, over the handlebars was a, um, a seat for me or my little brother but a seat for as I say even myself or my little brother and she was I mean she was coming down the road faster than anything I'd ever seen before and because she's she's gone by the sort of tractor and looking at the tractor her dad's in there because it was my mum's dad and um, and looking and then sort of must have kind of clocked me or, or I can't remember if my granddad sort of waved or whatever and Jesus when she got to that crawler did I get oh dear me did I get a rollicking honestly like cool. and because my granddad then sort of told me off because I lied to him and said that mum said I was okay down there and oh dear was I in trouble I didn't get many more rides on the uh, crawler that year <laughs> uh, but boy oh boy oh boy did I get in trouble as I say I, it was whew. Uh, you know, I've had some tellings off in my times, but not like that one. <laughs> and then, of course, like, you know, being sort of back in the 80s, you know, I'd get home and mum, you know, we'd get through the door and mum's still going at me and she's going, you wait till your father gets home. I'm telling him everything. And I'm thinking, oh, God, no, please don't tell dad. Because, like, then mum's telling dad. And then dad comes, I think I was up in my room, and dad comes and shouts at me and, you know, sort of screams at me and, oh, you could have been killed, you could have been kidnapped, you know, you could be being mistreated now by someone else and all this, you know, like, I don't know, because uh, yeah, as a kid, I didn't understand, you know, I was just like, yeah. And then when he finished, I remember looking him square in the eyes and saying, I did enjoy my ride though, dad. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think I down too well. I think I down too well. Um, you know, got to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was good times. It was good times, you know. And, and uh, as I say, I, I have a saying in life, all is well that ends well. And it ended well, so all is well. Uh, you know, And uh, but boy, quad did I get in trouble. But yeah, so uh, as I say, that's uh, what we're doing, what we're doing. But as I say, today we need to get these ploughing done in these three fields. Oh, there goes the little David Brown. Hello, little David Brown. Couldn't have timed that any better. Um, and uh, as I say, we need to get this uh, plough. This is the biggest one. The other two are not as big as this one. So, But what I'm going to do is, just because I have been doing quite a lot of chatty videos while I'm ploughing, um, and we've been doing quite a bit of ploughing as well in um, 1950s. I will time lapse this um, because I need to get it ploughed so as I can get it drilled uh, because the game requires me to plough them. Um, so that that that's why you know we're sort of doing it. But I didn't want to get all the ploughing done. You kind of come back and go, well, when did you get all the ploughing done? Because I missed that episode, and it's like, well, you've not missed anything because I'm ploughing. Um, but yeah, I will do time lapse, and uh, I'll see you at the end. Bye for now.
and I'm back. So as you can see, we have been ploughing. <clears throat> now, I will confess, it's not the straightest ploughing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I've been looking down some of the, um, when I get to the other end of the field and then sort of looking back and I think, Jesus, what the hell was in my <laughs> blackcurrant squash this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen boomerangs with straighter lines. Anyway, but uh, we are gradually, slowly but surely straightening it out again. Uh, we'll get a bit easier as we go, a bit further over the field. Uh, because what tends to happen is obviously the field is slowly getting shorter. Uh, so eventually you will, um, as I say, you'll get to the point where you'll um, be able to straighten it out. Because, uh, as I say, you won't be travelling as far. But... I'm trying to straighten it up before that happens, if I'm honest. I'm trying to take out the bend before the field does. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone else has noticed it with this map as well. The birds in certain places are really... The sort of scenic sounds are really loud in some places, aren't they? As you can see, look, we are slowly but surely straightening it up again. Um, and that comes again from, and you know, and, I'm, and I'll sort of say it every time that you know a situation like this comes along, is and you know always remember this is not me saying this is what you definitely have to do. This is the way I do it. So I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm just saying it's the way I do it. It works for me, and so therefore, you know, I sort of pass that on. But. You know, there'll be other people out there that'll have a different way of doing it that will, you know, and, and that works for them. And, you know, that's that's brilliant. Uh, you know, we all have to we have to start somewhere. And usually by starting somewhere, we start by listening to someone that has, you know, sort of got a technique or a way for themselves. And then we either develop it or we just copy it or do whatever. But <clears throat> the biggest thing for me is, is when... I see, you know, and a few weeks ago I had to go and help my friend, well, I didn't have to, but he rang me and said, I'm trying to plough this field straight, and I, and I just can't, can you come and have a look and sort of see if you can put me right, and uh, I said to him, right, I said, we'll do uh, three or four uh, rounds, I said, and I'll just watch you plough, I said, and then I'll go from there, and I'm going to say to you exactly what I said to him. Um, and then he thinks, you know, sort of our mental and what have you. But eventually he started to, I think, understand the principle. But, um, you know, as I say, the, the, the bit of advice that I would give, because it's what I've been doing here, is <clears throat> the big mistake everyone makes is when ploughing. Uh, and it kind of works for power harrowing and drilling and stuff like that as well. But the biggest mistake that people make is they try and steer the tractor down the field and you don't want to be doing that. So the tractor should, you should be squaring, looking right down the line and then just be going up and down. When you get a kink in it, like I did get a bit of a, a massive kink, well I've got two kinks in it, I've got one in the middle and one on the other red where I've just been. Um, <clears throat> There's quite a few ways you can straighten that out. You can either just literally look down the field, point A to point B, and just drive that line. Now that's okay, and if you're in a field where no one's going to be taking a blind bit of notice and this, that, and everything else, then that's fine because no one's really going to see. But and and literally all you do is you just cut it. The, you just cut the field completely off from what you've done so you literally draw a brand new straight line down the field um, it means you'll be ploughing on top of ploughing and then some bits you'll be missing a little bit as you try and keep it straight but and I, I don't like that uh, way of doing it just because of the fact that um, you know you will end up missing bits at one end of the field um, you know because you're trying to drive straight through well if you've got one bit that's further ahead than the other bit, you're going to miss bits. Um, you, you can't be off it. But what I do is, so down here, 
I mean, it's not too bad now, even in cab it doesn't look that bad, but, um, you know, coming down the field where the curve is, or where the bend is in the ploughing, and literally, as I say, don't steer the tractor. When the plough reaches the bend, then steer. And what you're then doing is you're steering the plough and not the tractor. The tractor's just going to go in the direction that you point it. That, you know, so... As I say, don't, you know, I mean, some drivers do, some tractor drivers do have a tendency to sort of keep moving the steering wheel up and down while they're driving down the field. I tend, once I've got it set, once I've done that first straight breed, I don't really have my hands on the steering wheel for the rest of the way down, like up and down the field. I only have my hands on the steering wheel when I'm turning around. Um, but otherwise, I don't have my hands on the on the steering wheel, especially if you're ploughing in the furrow. You don't need to, as long as you've done your first breed re relatively straight, or you know, sort of as straight as you can get it. The the ploughing and the furrow wall are going to keep your tractor pointing in that direction all the time, um, and and so that's how you'll know you're going straight. But when you're going along, as I say, like you know, down the field and um, you've got kinks in it. Don't steer until you get the plough to the kink. Once the plough's to the kink, then steer to bring it out or bring it in, depending on whether it's... So if the kink has gone further outside of the uh, sort of this end and the point that end, so you can see all the way down there. So you can see that it's a fairly straight line until you get to... Where's my mouse? Until you get to about there. And then it kinks because it comes over then and then kinks back out again and then goes straight again. So what you would do is, is drive in here, drive in your furrow as normal, not steer, don't steer. When your tractor reaches that point, just keep going in the straight line. When your plough reaches that point, you need to try and stick your plough, so it's not missing, but as tight to that furrow wall as you can get it. And then as you do that and then go up there and then as soon as you get off this bit that's inward again you then let the tractor follow back its original route and the plow will just move over ever so slightly and what will happen is you do that three or four times as you're going up and down eventually you will pull this bit level and in a straight line with this bit um, you know the other sort of thing that people try and do as well is they try and straighten a kink in the first pass that they notice it you're not going to do it all you're going to do is you're going to make that kink worse um you know so so don't be desperate to straighten you know the kink out straight away i mean the other thing you could do is again is put your wheels to the furrow there um so they're sort of on top of the plowing at the minute and you're sort of not plowing with the first furrow because the first furrow will be in the open furrow that you've got and then just try and plow it straight through um, like this, um, you know, but uh, as I say, that's how you do it. It's just not easy to show you on a game, but, um, you know, if I get another save game where I end up doing it, pretty much all of my save games, I play a freehand, uh, just because I think, well, you know, yes, it may be a computer game, but I should still be able to drive a tractor in a straight line, uh, but this field, it really hasn't worked out like that, but as I say, not, not to be a problem, but, um, yeah, so hopefully you sort of understood what I was trying to say there. But if not, just drop some questions in the um, in the comments, and uh, and I'll try and answer them. And, it, and if I get enough questions, I'll do a video where I set up loads of different bits and pieces, like kinks in ploughing and stuff, and then try and show. I mean, it's not really going to work with this tractor because this bot, this plough, does boss this tractor. This plough is quite capable. Of pulling this tractor offline, um, the best setup that I know to show you how to get kinks and things out is either uh, 1950s farm because that crawler is in charge of the plow, um, so I'd be able to show you exactly what I mean on there, um, or I would sort of as again just set up something deliberate um, so that you could actually. You know a tractor that's in charge of the plow and then show you how to do it um, it's easier a little bit with a trailed plow uh, and the other thing as well is and again this isn't really going to count on here I don't think 
because I don't think it's going to be simulated. But um, so in no, it's not. It's not on these ones. Uh, but on the modern John Deere's, uh, which obviously we haven't got any of. But where this link arm is, there would be an arm to the sort of almost like the. Where's my? There would be an arm from the link arm to there, and it'd have a chain on it. When you're ploughing, I don't know whether actually it might be on this side. No, it's not. Um, but yeah, so again, it doesn't really make no difference. But that again, from this arm, from sort of here somewhere, there'd be a um, like a chain that goes across there on like a metal bracket. Um, when I'm playing on a map with one of the mo with some modern tractors I'll try and remember to show you um, but you must take that chain off and then what that does is that allows the arms to float independently if you keep that chain on it keeps those arms rigid in the position that they're in and that means that your ploughing is going to be all over the place because if your tractor moves the whole plough is going to move if you've got the chains off and your tractor moves in theory for a little bit of the way your plough is still going to be running on a straight line it's still going to be running where it was running it will take a little while for the headstock to start to follow the tractor because the arms will just move over a little bit um, and there'll be a little bit of uh, sort of play in them um, but it does help to keep does help to keep it straight but um, yeah as I say just put some uh, you know, if, if you've got questions or whatever, put them in the comments. It's not just about ploughing, about drilling, about anything. Put them in the comments, and if I can answer them, I will we'll obviously answer them, and I'll try and do demonstrations as well to kind of roughly show you what I mean. But like I say, just because I'm sort of saying this doesn't mean I know everything, and not, I'm absolutely right because I'm not. You know, I just know the way I used to do things, um, and, you know, the way I look at it is, is that it, though it isn't necessarily the right way to do it, it's the way I did do it, and I never used to get any complaints. So people were obviously happy with what I was doing, uh, because on the first farm they definitely would have complained, and on the second farm as well, um, they, you know, they used to tell you very quickly if something was not right. Um, but as you can see here, actually, it's actually quite a good thing. Like if I turn the tractor. Look at how the plough is instantly following, and that's because those arms are not on float. Now, if those arms were on float, when I do that, that plough wouldn't start to go with my wheels. That would that would maintain its track down the field, only for a little way, because once the tractor turns, you know, sort of long enough, the plough's got to follow because you know there's no choice. But but yeah, no, I say really enjoyed using this tractor. Um, it's the first ever time I've sort of used it and played with it and uh, yeah i've really enjoyed it and uh, as i say it's gone relatively well in here and um we you know we won't be long before we're across the field but i am going to leave the um oh, it's nice to see actually the paint beginning to to um sort of wear off as well as it's going through so that's quite nice to see hopefully all of these furrows will go um silver eventually as they should do um so yeah that's pretty cool why's the plow moving There you go. So that's proof that the plough is boss of the tractor, look, because the tractor can't even hold it in a straight line just sitting still. Um, so that's why I say it's very difficult to plough with this. But the crawler that I was going to use as the track marshal, that would have handled this plough brilliantly. Um, and, you know, it would have done a really good job. But, um, but yeah, as I say, I'm going to leave the uh, video here. Um, if you haven't done it already, we've got a kink in it again. Um, if you haven't done already, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It really does help me, helps the channel. A massive thank you to everyone that has helped me reach 500 subscribers. I honestly and truthfully can't believe because that was going to be my target for the 1st of October. And so the fact that it's, you know, we're now coming to mid-August and I've achieved that, that is absolutely, honestly, it blows my mind. Um, so a massive, massive thank you. Um, and you know long may the channel keep growing and, and the videos keep coming but well, the videos will keep coming because 
as I've said many times before, I love doing them and and uh, and I love chatting to you guys and and doing all of that good stuff. But uh, yeah, so as I say, like, comment, and subscribe. Share the videos wherever you share them. It really does help the channel also. And uh, all that's left for me to say is thanks ever so much for joining me on this episode. I've really enjoyed having your company, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.